Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Picky. We are episode 184. I'm streaming live to both YouTube and Facebook. And welcome as you roll on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US. And in tonight's live broadcast, I'm actually gonna share three different cards tonight. I'm switching it up on you. I'm taking it easy on myself. I will not be doing a separate YouTube video tutorial this week, but I will roll out my cards over the next three blog posts. So tomorrow, Friday, and Monday, we're gonna be using products from the Butterfly Bouquet promotion that's going on right now. I'm excited to show you what I have. Quick and easy cards. Hello, Connie and Irene, Jerry Lynn, Mary, Karen, hi, Keith, from 10 minutes away. I miss seeing you. Hi, Deborah, Cindy, Nancy, hello. Nancy, I just saw you last night on our team meeting. Hi, Vicki, Linda, Brad and Jackie from Sydney. Hi, Beth, Mary, Judy, welcome. I don't have any artwork from the kids to share with you tonight, so we're gonna jump into things pretty quickly. This is the first time I've done three cards on a live. Um, they're easy cards, but you know me, I love quick and easy, but um, packs a punch, right? So I absolutely love the Butterfly Bouquet group of products. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let me quick do some housekeeping. My host code for March, can you believe that it's March, is 93U3UR47. They get harder and harder to say. Please use that host code if you place an order with me under $150. If you place an order of $75 or more, my free gift that Okay, I think I'm back. It looks like am I putting I'm like halfway on the screen right now. Uh, oh, let's see. I'm gonna Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry. Yes, I froze. There's something going on with my internet tonight. It's been a little bit glitchy today. So hopefully, yeah, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I think I am back. If you guys will just give me a heads up that you can see me live again. That's what tonight's gonna be like, right? Some some glitches, I think, but it looks like we're live. I'm back. Thank you, Missy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's get back and then we'll jump right into the projects while we still can. So my free gift for orders of $75 or more is the Simply Chamois. If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered for me in a while and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit your catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Okay. Um, let's see, celebration is over, but we still have two amazing catalogs to choose from. The mini catalog goes through June 3rd. I can't remember the date. The annual catalog will go through May 3rd. And tonight I'm going to be sharing with you projects using, or three cards using the Butterfly Bouquet collection of products. There's a bundle, which includes a stamp set and a set of dies. You can purchase those separately as well. And there's two different papers that we can get. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my camera here. All right. And then let me start to show you some of the papers and the stamp set and the dies. I was literally creating right up to the very minute. <laughs> So we have got the Brilliant Wings dies. Now I have a lot of them already out that we're gonna use tonight. 
the beautiful Butterfly Bijou Designer Series paper, which I just can't stand this paper because I'm, I can't stand it. I can't stand how cute this paper is and the colors that are in it. So I'm gonna just kind of flip through really quickly so you can see these patterns. You're seeing both sides here. It's six by six Designer Series paper, double-sided. You get 48 sheets. And I'll tell you when I get to my most favorite pattern. I've probably stolen a couple of these, so I'm hoping we're not gonna miss any of them. This one is my favorite. Let me just hold that close up to the camera here. I love that. There's, it's like pink and green clouds in the background and these beautiful, almost watercolor butterflies. Beautiful. All right, so there's that. And I think maybe this is the last one. Look how pretty that rainbow of butterflies is. So I love this paper. There's another paper. This is called the Natural Touch Specialty Paper. And I don't know, I guess you can kind of see it's, it's I don't know how to describe this. It's normal weight paper, but it has a embossed, like a wood grain embossed texture to it. And you can see that it's a little bit shiny. We're gonna use this on one of the cards tonight. This comes in 12 by 12 um, and you get two sheets of it. Um, the bundle you can get together at a 10% discount. I haven't shown you that stamp set yet. Here's the stamp set. And I'm gonna show you because I've got it on my Stamparatus plate right now. We're gonna use it tonight. It is all one stamp set. So do the dies cut out the designs in the DSP? They do, Teresa. I'm gonna actually show you that tonight. Um, super excited about that. Um, so it, this is all one stamp. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks tonight about sort of maximizing the fact that it's a single stamp. And I did see another demonstrator, I think Stella McKay suggested in our um, leaders group, buy two stamp sets and one of them you can cut into pieces. How genius is that? The stamp set $17 on its own. So that's not too bad of a price to cut into individual pieces. You're gonna want to at least have one that is all together. It is sort of like wallpaper, Pam. That's an interesting, yeah, kind of like wallpaper. Um, but what I love about it is it already has the wood grain texture and it, the texture and the look. So it's real easy to put on a card to add a little bit of texture without bringing out an embossing folder. So, um, so one giant stamp set and then the dies because I've been busy working. This is the die is all one as well. So I'm going to show you, um, a trick with the stamp apparatus because you may not want to stamp all of the butterflies at once. So I'm going to show you a little trick there and I'm going to just try to keep it going. <laughs> I'm not sure which, I'm not going to show you the cards ahead of time. We're going to make them on the fly. I think I'm going to start with the simplest one of the bunch because I already have my Stamparatus plate set up. And of course that's going to give me a hard time there. Now I just have to remember where I put everything. All right. So we are going to start with a thick basic white. I got it right this time. Piece of cardstock. I have taken an entire sheet of eight and a half by 11 and I scored it on the long side at five and a half inches. And then I cut it on the short side at four and a quarter. This is a top fold portrait style card. I got two card bases out of it. One was my sample and one was this one. So you can see I've got the score line here in the middle. Again, the score line creates a valley and then we're gonna fold that to create a mountain fold. And all my tools are behind me tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and score that. The great thing about white card bases is you don't have to worry about putting any sort of panel on the inside. You can just write on the inside. However, if you're like me and you sometimes make mistakes, you can write on a panel and then glue it to the inside. <laughs> That's a little trick of the trade there. So I've got that, that card base is done. Then I've got a piece of the beautiful Poppy Parade. It's one of the coordinating colors in this suite of products. This measures three and three quarters by five. Again, if you have any raised edges on your cardstock from your paper trimmer, just take your bone folder and smooth those out. So three and three quarters by five. And then I've got another piece. This is the regular weight, basic white, and this measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. That's gonna give us just a little peek of Poppy Parade on the base of this card, okay? So I'm gonna smooth that out. 
We're gonna do the stamping first and then I'm gonna bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine and I'm gonna show you how amazing the dies are paired with the designer series paper. So where did I put my, here we go. <laughs> okay, so this sentiment comes from my favorite sentiment stamp set in the mini catalog. We've talked about this before on past broadcasts, the Happy Thought stamp set. The Butterfly Brilliance uh, bundle just has that one single stamp set. The basic white replaces whis Whisper White. That's correct, Anne. Um, unfortunately, our, the paper mill that produced our Whisper White actually went out of business due to COVID. So uh, Stampin' Up! quickly adapted it and found a reputable paper mill to replace it. We're now calling it Basic White. Good question. So Happy Thoughts is great. Uh, the Butterfly Brilliant stamp set has no sentiment. So grab sentiments that are in your stash and they're going to go well with this bundle. Okay, so I have put the sentiment and I grabbed the longer one here, the little things you do so well and so often make a big difference to so many people. So that's a pretty long one for a portrait card. So I started off originally by putting my, again, this is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. I originally had put that in the corner here. And then I realized that my, the edge of my stamp was gonna be too close to the hinge. So my suggestion for this is get the grid paper. It comes in a pack of 50, it is sold separately. I think I misunderstood the question last week. The Stamparatus does not come with the grid paper, but it's a pretty inexpensive purchase. And you can use these until you can't see white anymore. <laughs> and then use your next piece and you're gonna have the 50 sheets forever. So what I like to do is to stamp right onto that grid paper to sort of get an idea, making sure that this is lined up straight, that I can sort of picture where I want to lay the card base. Uh, I am, now I obviously laid the stamp on the card base first or the card layer, picked it up on my Stamparatus plate and then pulled the layer away and stamped. Then I noticed I, did this a couple of times, but I want to be just a little bit to the left of this. I guess it's a five inch marker here because we're starting at one <laughs> from the right, but I'm going to be just about, I don't know, a 16th of an inch. And then I am going to use my magnet. I know you're going to ask, this is a uh, duct tape, sort of a mermaid pattern. I found it on Amazon. <laughs> it makes me happy. And I use Poppy Parade ink. Now I'm going to show you another tip here. I love to share tips with you. I think you can probably tell that my Poppy Parade needs to be re-inked. So hold on. If I can find it. Where did, where is Poppy Parade? I've got my re-inker and I will tell you, whenever you buy ink pads, buy the, re the ink refills. I have never once had to replace an ink refill in the 11 years that I've been a demonstrator. These things last forever. Now I don't see my tool. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, well, that's kind of a bust. Um, <laughs> I don't see where, hold on. Where is it? <clears throat> it's my um, putty knife, or the, okay. So the palette knives that come from Stampin' Up, I probably um, re-inked something. Okay, we're gonna pretend tonight. I'm not actually gonna demonstrate it, but we the palette knives come in a set of three. There's one that's a much longer one, and I, I know I re-inked an ink pad not too long ago, and I misplaced it because that's how I roll. But there's a longer one, and what I would do with the ink refill is I would unscrew the cap, and then I go back and forth while squeezing the bottle, not too hard, but back and forth in a grid pattern. I go both horizontally and vertically, and then I would take not this palette knife because it's a little small. You could also use a, um, a gift card that you've already spent the money on or an expired credit card. And then you want to just gently sort of spread the ink and press it into the ink pad. I will demonstrate that on a future live when I can find my palette knife. So um, that's how I would normally re-ink it. And maybe you guys have some tips or tricks that you can share on how you do your re-inkers. But I'm gonna go ahead and ink up that stamp set. The other thing I love about the Stamparatus is that we can stamp it a couple times if, for example, if you've got a drier ink pad that needs a little bit of re-inking, 
So I can see it's a little bit lighter in some areas. And that will stamp in exactly the same spot. Perfect. Okay. Now be real careful with your magnets. You don't want them touching. They're separated purposefully on the bottom. And also that um, duct tape makes it easy for me to pick that up. Okay. Let's get the ink pad out of the way so I don't make a mess. And then I'm going to show you the magic of the dies. Okay. So this pattern, I believe it's the first pattern that will be in your pack that has the larger um, butterflies. Look at this all of the whole butterflies on the sheet, so not these ones that are partially cut off, will be cut out with the dies. Is that amazing or what? So I'm gonna grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Do you have a way, so Ava, that's a good question. I would actually do the same thing. I would take, if it's way too juicy, I might put a paper towel on it to sop up some of the ink. But before I do that, I would try with the palette knife to just try to press the ink into the foam pad to see if that makes a difference. If it's still too juicy, feel free to dab it up because the ink refills are cheap and when you need to re-ink it, you'll be good to go. But hopefully that helps you. Okay, so Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. This is the big honkin' one because this one, this die is too wide for the mini. And you'll note symbols in your catalog of which ones fit in the mini machine. I'm going to kind of turn this on an angle here so I can get this lined up. Now I'm actually going to grab, I've got a piece, I, I'm not going to recommend this tape because it's pretty darn sticky. Um, there's another tape I want to try, but I haven't um, ordered it yet. But this is just supposed to be like repositional painter's tape. So I'm just going to grab two pieces because I don't want my dies shifting on me. So I'm lining this up perfectly with the paper and I'm at a weird angle right now. Let's just do one on either side and I'm just gently sort of pressing that tape down. Then we're going to run that through. And all the butterflies that didn't have any tape on them, I will show you what these all look like. I'm going to bring that machine back in a second. But oh my goodness, talk about making this easy peasy. All right, let's get the tape off. I try to pull the tape off really gently so we don't tear our paper. When it goes through the machine, that tape really gets stuck down. So I'd love to see in the comments if there's any recommendations of what you like to use. Washi, tapes wor washi tape works well too, but sometimes it gets a little too sticky. Is there a question? Oh, have I tried the post-it tape? I do have the post-it tape, Denise, but you know what? I've never tried it to hold down dies. I usually um, use it to mask um, stamps. Like if there's a part of the sentiment that I don't want to use, I'll have to try the post-it tape. You heard anything about when the mag I have not heard that Jerry Lynn no updates there I was gonna show you this I was all prepared before so you could see the black background so you, this would pop so those dies cut out six beautiful butterflies look at those so let's bring our card back I'm gonna show you just a bunch of different ways to use this set of products. So we've got our uh, basic white thick card base, then we've got our Poppy Parade, then we've got our basic white, the regular weight. And this is gonna be one of those cards that is gonna be a go-to, easy to do, make a whole bunch of them and use up all those butterflies that you're gonna die cut. So liquid glue is my favorite thing ever. because I can slide that right into place, especially with that thin layer of Poppy Parade peeking out. And again, if you feel any raised edges, smooth them out. And this one I'm gonna glue right to the card base, but you could also pop it up on dimensionals.
Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some dimensionals for the back of this beautiful butterfly. And we're gonna be generous, we'll do five dimensionals. I mean, talk about easy. I haven't even put my new, this, I just opened this pack of rhinestones and haven't put it in my storage yet, but one little rhinestone in the center of that butterfly and look at how easy that card is. Now, imagine doing the same layout with each of these butterflies. Change the colors of the cardstock you use, the ink you stamp with, could even do kind of a pair or a trio. I mean, so many fun things to do with this paper. Now, unfortunately, not every sheet in the pack is that pattern, but you can get a lot of these, okay? So that is card number one, easy peasy. Let's see. Is Tombow good on fabric? I don't know, Lillian, that's a good question. I know that when it dries and you haven't stuck it to something, it becomes sort of a reposition, repositionable adhesive. So I'm not sure if, cause you know how glue might seep through fabric. I don't know. If anybody's tried it on fabric, let us know. All right, so next card, is this the one I want to do next? No, we're gonna do the, the Bermuda Bay one. So this one I'm gonna do from scratch cause I didn't have time to cut it out. We're gonna do a mono, monochromatic card. I'm gonna start with the stamping first. So grabbing the Stamparatus. I have already positioned my stamp on one of the plates. That's the other thing I love about the Stamparatus are the removable plates. I'm gonna cut a piece of piece of basic white. I'm going to cut this to five and a half, or I could even just do, let's do six by six. Now what I love about the paper trimmer is this is the six inch mark. So you just push your the edge of your cardstock and you got six inches. So I'm just going to put this in the Stamparatus. We're going to create a template with this. You all may already know this trick, but maybe this will blow some of your minds. <laughs> so I've got the template here. I'm gonna ink up this whole stamp set. Sorry, I keep turning away from the mic. I'm gonna ink up the whole stamp set in Bermuda Bay. Get that good and inked, because this is a really detailed stamp. The butterflies are just beautiful. Okay, so making sure that that's up in the corner on both the top edge and the right edge. And then press that down. I don't have a Chucky or a dry erase marker, but I loved all your um, suggestions last week about what you use to sort of smooth this around. Now this is a really big stamp set. So you do wanna make sure that you're getting good ink coverage and good pressure. Look at that. Oh my gosh, love Bermuda Bay too. How pretty are those butterflies? All right. So I'm going to come back with the, oh, <laughs> Norlene. Norlene's asking about my earrings. If I remember Norlene, I'll show when I flip, well, I'll flip the camera real quick. So I just celebrated my 20th anniversary with the company that I work for. And I got to pick out my anniversary gift from the company and I got these pretty earrings. That's what Norlene's asking about. Thank you. <laughs> Little sidebar there, okay? <laughs> All right, so. Before I make a mess, we're gonna do the same thing. This time though, we're gonna cut out the stamped image. I absolutely love this set of products. Now, it will be, the um, bundle is carrying over into the annual catalog. The papers are not. The papers will only be available while supplies last until May 3rd, okay? 
And I'm just making sure these get all lined up. The dye lines up really well with these butterflies. I'm going to use that tape again, same tape from last time. Six inches is about the width of the cutting area, so that's why I cut my piece to six by six. The stamp set is about almost six inches tall by like four and a half, or yeah, four and a half inches wide. So it's you wouldn't be able to get all those butterflies on a normal A2 card. Now I'm going to show you one more trick. I'm actually just going to bring in, this piece isn't going to be big enough for the whole thing, but so you get the idea. I'm trying to rescue the butterflies. Catalog number of the butterfly DSP. I do actually. Where did I put the paper? Somewheres. <laughs> Things disappear on my... <laughs> All right, the catalog number is 156824, okay? And if you visit my blog post from yesterday, it's the one that's at the top of my blog at thepaperpixie.com. You can see those item numbers as well. It is an out of catalog um, product suite. Now, except for that the, um, the dies in the stamp set will be in the new annual catalog, which launches on May 4th. Okay, that's going to be here before we know it. All right. Oh, that is wide enough. Okay. So I don't know why I'm doing it this way. <laughs> I'm just going to show you, I'm going to cut a bunch of blanks here and I'm going to show you where the magic happens with the template we just created on the Stamparatus. This is the other thing that is one of my favorite things about the Stamparatus is the fact that you can stamp once and then set up a template and cut, 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 cut a bunch of blanks. And then, all right, let's, where did I put the, do you have the item number for the dies? I do. <laughs> all right, item number for the dies is 155523. Now, if you wanted to get both at a 10% discount, the bundle is 155821, okay? The bundle is 5475. If you wanted all four products, the price I believe is 7125. I think that's the price. Um, the specialty paper and the DSP, neither of them will be in the catalog. They are both exclusive to this promotion. So, while supplies last. I probably would be more worried about the butterfly paper than the, <laughs> the natural touch specialty. All right, so my Stamparatus, as things are sticking to my magnets on the back, look at all that fun stuff. The magnets are so strong. <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh. This is what happens when you have creative time and you make a mess everywhere because stuff's just everywhere. I know you all create that way. All right, so this was our template, the piece of six by six. I'm gonna bring that back in. I'm making sure that everything is pushed into the, cor into the corner here. So I'm gonna show you a trick. Let's bring that magnet back. Should have just left it out. I don't want that template to shift on me, so I'm just gonna put the magnet there on the left side. And then let's say that I just want to stamp this butterfly. Well, I've already got a template. I've got a bunch of blanks. Let's say I wanna do this guy and this guy. So then I can come in and I can just make sure that those are the two butterflies that I've inked up. Let's see, I'll make sure I have the right ones. And the good thing about that grid paper is to make sure that you don't get ink everywhere. So I've got those two butterflies inked up. Got my template in place and I'm just gonna go ahead and go right on those blanks. Look at that. And then I like to use 
the spatula end of my take your pick tool to get those out of there. <laughs> this helps me pick them out. But look, now I only got the two butterflies I wanted, but I've got this template now that I can store somewhere, maybe in with the stamp set or something. You obviously would probably want to leave the stamp set on one of your Stamparatus plates until you're done using it, but how cool is that? So there's my little quick tip for tonight, or one of many, right? Okay, which card was I working on? The <laughs> Bermuda Bay one, all right. Now, of course, I need to do one more thing. I'm going to cut out an intricate if I can find my dies. We're going to do oh, look at me. I'm all over the place today. Where's my tiny die? I'm going to grab the tiny detailed die. He moved on me. Just gonna shake off all those little pieces. It's so funny, Bermuda Bay just does not like to show up on camera that well. But look at that dye. Oh my goodness, I can't. So cute. I'm not done with the stamp and cut and emboss machine. <laughs> I'm done for this card though. All right, so let me show you how I do a card base. Bermuda Bay, I always do two cards at a time. Here's my eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna line this up at five and a half. And I'm gonna score. Then I'm gonna turn it to the short side, line it up at four and a quarter, and cut. Then I've got two card bases ready to go. One off to the side. I'm gonna fold, burnish. I have a whole stack of uh, basic white cardstock cut to four by five and a quarter. I'm going to grab two of those because that one's going to need it. This is going to go on the inside of my card. And that just saves me time when creating. Again, if you have a hard time, you're worried you're going to make a mistake on the inside of your card, you can write on it first before you glue it down. I often do that when I write cards to my husband. <laughs> just in case I goof. So that's a layer on the inside. I don't know what size this is. Let's see. I got a new ruler, you guys. Okay, so three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. That's not the size I want. <laughs> Lily. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's been one of those days. All right, so this layer is going to be three and three quarters by five. Then I'm going to grab the really pretty Bermuda Bay pattern from Butterfly Bijou. I kind of love saying that. And we're going to cut this one to three and five eighths. These are like my favorite dimensions three and five eighths by five and sorry four and seven eighths but hold on to this piece because we're going to use this pattern for oh yeah let's see it's not in my favorites yet Susan I will add it though um, it's from Mr. Penn can you see that the little mustache and it came with a six inch ruler and a 12 inch ruler but yes I will add it um, I think the measurements it's got both metric and imperial and it's just, a, I've, I've used this more often than I thought I would in just the last few days that I've had it. So, <laughs> but look at this. I told you this is my favorite pattern, so I had to add it to another card. That will be card number three. Okay, like this. This was the one card I didn't cut out ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. I hate to put glue on this pattern because it's my favorite.
And this, I love that pop of white behind a bold color like Bermuda Bay. And we'll glue this to the card base. Again, these are, when you have everything cut and ready to go, <laughs> really quick and easy cards to put together. But isn't it amazing how different that pop of white really makes this card pop? But easy with this pattern on the designer series paper, but you get that monotone effect. Again, I'm just smoothing out those raised edges. I've got one more strip to cut. This one's going to be seven eighths of an inch by, is this already three and five eighths? Nope. Seven eighths by three and five eighths. Okay, we got for my Bermuda Bay and we're going to stamp happy birthday on this. Okay. This again comes from the Happy Thoughts stamp set. Let's go on this side. Hopefully I get this straight. Kind of holding my breath. Put your back into it. Yay! Alright, so this panel is just going to glue right across the top. Or I should say right across the bottom or towards the bottom. Oh, I totally forgot. I'm going to have to show my sample. Do you know what I forgot? The ribbon. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. I'm going to show you two different ways. This will be one sample and I'll show you the other one that I made. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab this beautiful butterfly that we stamped in Bermuda Bay and I'm going to layer that die cut one right over the top. Okay. So a little bit of glue right on his midsection. There's that. This one I'm going to pop up on dimensionals. I love butterflies for all the things that they stand for. Transformation and... I don't know, just there's something about butterflies. Stampin' Up knocked this one out of the park. You'll see this is a very similar layout to the one I did before. That also helps with creating. And I'm gonna grab a trio of rhinestones. Let's see, we'll do the big one in the center. Medium one at the bottom. This will be pretty with pearls, with the um, opal rounds. I should be using my putty end here. So there is that card. Okay. Now let me show you the sample I made. <laughs> I meant to do this. So I added a strip of the silver. I love this ribbon. It's the silver metallic edge ribbon. So it's white with silver. And I just cut a strip just the same length as the sentiment. So three and five eighths. And I use tear and tape to stick it to the back. So you'll have to tell me, I don't know, which one do you like better? The, I, don't, I don't know. What do you like the one with the ribbon. You're not sure yet now, are you? <laughs> you have to let me know in the comments. It's funny how green it's looking on the screen. All right, that's card number two. And then the final card, we are going to start with a card base of mint macaron. This measures four and a quarter by 11, again, scored in half at five and a half. Fold and burnish on that. I think this is the inside layer. Yes. So we've got four by five and a quarter for the inside. For some reason, it's always easier for me to do it sideways. <laughs> You're being children. Is that Lily? Yeah. The ribbon's winning. The ribbon's winning, yeah. Just a little added touch of bling. 
All right, so then we are gonna take, make sure I've got the right sizes here. All right, so we've got basic white. This is three and three quarter five. And then that beautiful natural touch specialty paper. That measures, again, my favorite measurements here, but three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. I typically build from the bottom up. And oftentimes I just start, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Did I not cut this one down? Let's see. Nope. Okay, let's do that again. That's too funny. I didn't trim off the end there, I guess. Can you tell I'm having an off week this week? Look at that. All right, so. Most of my cards are portrait Debbie, Debbie but that is because um, the way that I photograph my cards. It's easier to photograph them when they open that way. So I'm doing uh, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Hoping that was the difference. Yes. Again, there's that pop of white, but this also gives sort of the illusion that you've embossed something, but the paper did all the work for you. And those are just my favorite dimensions because of the way that you get a pretty good glimpse of the card base color and a little pop of color or white to brighten things up. And then that piece that we saved from the Bermuda Bay card, I'm gonna glue that. Similar layout to the last one. And I'm gonna grab this big white one that we cut out the blanks, but I'm gonna now cut out using this beautiful sort of cloud pattern. I love these colors. And then you just kind of want to pick where in the pattern you want to, I've got all my little Bermuda Bay pieces here you want that butterfly to pop out of. Where did I put my other cutting plate? these little pieces out. I'm making a mess. And all the most of the pieces come out except for maybe a couple tiny few. You just need to pop those out with your take your pick tool or the die brush that works as well but they pop out really well. I found that the new stamp and cut and emboss machine really cuts out those well. And I'm gonna take this and glue right on his midsection. I'm at the end of my glue bottle here and layer this over that white. Oh, I love this. And the wings are already dimensional from running it through the machine. But look at that, just that little subtle bit of color there with the pop of white. And I'm going to do dimensionals on the back of that. And this I'm going to put at a little bit of an angle here. 
Now I'm choosing not to do a sentiment on the front, but I am gonna add a little bow, and I've already got that bow done to save some time, but you can do a bow in a number of different ways. This bow, I did like a triple loop fork bow on that one. This one was just a double loop um, bunny ears bow. And I'm just gonna use my fine tip glue pen. I shared this last week, I think. Um, this works really well to hold ribbon down on your cards. It takes a little bit for the glue to adhere, but it's a much uh, stronger hold I've found than mini glue dots. Oops, says it's sticking to my finger instead of the card. I'm not giving it enough time there. And then again, I like to put my finger right up against that nozzle, and then it helps me guide the pin right back into place. I'm gonna set that off to the side for a second because I wanted to show you one more thing that I wanted to do. What ribbon did you use? I used the, thank you, um, Forever, no, I don't remember the name of it. Hold on one second. I wanna say it's the Forever Greenery. It's in the annual catalog. Somebody may beat me to it. Flowers for Every Season Ribbon Combo Pack. It's this one that comes with three. Got that beautiful um, Misty Moonlight and uh, Mint Macaron and, oh, sorry, Just Jade and Whisper White or Basic White, okay? And it looks like this, that beautiful, it's got white and misty moonlight wrapped with a bit of silver. Really pretty. But I was going to show you on this one is I'm going to grab the tiniest of those Bermuda Bay butterflies and jazz up the inside a little bit. Just put him down in the lower left corner there little something in there. Okay, so there's that. Now this one, we're gonna do a little bit of stamping on the inside because I didn't think that the front needed a sentiment. So with Misty Moonlight, and this is another sentiment from, <laughs> oh goodness, from Happy Thoughts. Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. Great card for the life we're living right now, isn't it? There we go. All right, let's pull out. I'm gonna show you the one with the ribbon, <laughs> the three cards, let's clean up the mess, and then we're gonna get to prize patrol. But these are three alternatives, very similar layouts. This one I just tweaked by bringing the butterflies down but I've got that horizontal strip with the DSP or designer series paper. This one, the strip with the sentiment. And this one didn't need a strip because we've got the white here, but the sentiment in the same position, we just kind of repositioned the butterflies. Just showed you different ways to use this group of products. I love them. I love the mint macaron paired with this natural touch specialty paper. It did all the work for me, right? So we've got the sentiment on the inside here butterfly in here and I left this one naked but we could certainly add maybe another butterfly in here or something like that okay so there we go any questions before we jump into prize patrol all right let's see we're going to announce the winners from last week so if you are chosen as a winner this is where you want to go to claim Last week's prize patrol was a circle celebration stamp set. So congratulations to Thumbnail Ranch. I believe her name is Stephanie. She's using her husband's account. Thumbnail Ranch and Pat Mills. Congratulations. You just want to go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol to claim your prize. And I'll get those in the mail to you as well as a handmade card from my stash. Tonight's prize patrol is the card, the sentiment stamp set we use tonight, the Happy Thoughts stamp set. Now to enter to win, you want to leave the comment hashtag prize patrol 
On Facebook, just leave that in the comments, the normal comments. On YouTube, in order to be entered to win, you need to leave that in the comments of the video, not in the live chat, okay? So make sure you're leaving hashtag prize patrol in the comments of the video on YouTube. Facebook, you know what to do. And this applies to both the, my live watchers and my replay watchers. I will choose winners next Wednesday and announce winners on next uh, live with the paper pixie. Don't forget, no spaces. Use the hashtag so you can be entered to win. And make sure you're leaving the comment on the live or the live replay video, not any of my pre-recorded videos, okay? So hashtag prize patrol. Thank you for joining me tonight. Sorry, I was all over the place, but I absolutely love the Butterfly Bouquet group of products. I think that's what, it's not a group, but it's like a suite of products or it's beautiful with the papers, the stamp set, the dies. There's just so many options and I love these cards. So here's what's gonna happen. These cards will post individually to my blog tomorrow, Friday and Monday with all the project details, measurements, and then you'll see all the products linked at the bottom as well. And remember those papers are while supplies last from now until May 3rd. The bundle, so the stamp and the dies will carry over into the annual catalog. So we'll get to enjoy those all the way through next April. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll be live again next Wednesday for episode 185. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching the replay to my re replay watchers. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Take good care. Bye.